Next on Special Report, Fox News is live at the Cobra Center in Columbia, South Carolina, where later tonight, 10 GOP candidates square off for the Fox News First in the South presidential debate. If you're one of the minor candidates, or what you consider the minor candidates right now, how do you punch through in it? One way to do that, of course, is to take on, in some way, one of the major candidates. Now, so far, that hasn't happened in any of these debates, really, on either side. I think Iraq will be a, a dominant issue. It's the issue of our era, and there's going to be a lot of questions about that. As Fox reports live from Columbia, South Carolina, demonstrators for all the candidates are out, proving to be a blockbuster night. You decide 2008. The first in the South Republican presidential candidates debate. Live from the Coger Center on the campus of the University of South Carolina. Congressman Paul, you're one of six House Republicans who back in 2002 voted against authorizing President right. Bush to use force in Iraq. Now you say we should pull our troops out. A recent poll found that 77 percent of Republicans disapprove of the idea of setting a timetable for withdrawal. Are you running for the nomination of the wrong party? But you, you have to realize that the base of the Republican Party shrunk last year because of the war issue. So that percentage represents less people. If you look at 65 to 70 percent of the American people, they want us out of there. They want the war over. In 2002, I offered an amendment to uh, international relations to declare war, up or down. And it was nobody voted for the war. And my argument there was, if we want to go to war and if we should go to war, the Congress should declare it. We don't go to war like, like we did in Vietnam and Korea because the wars never end. And I argued the case and made the point that it would be a quagmire if we go in. Ronald Reagan in 1983 sent Marines into Lebanon. And he said he would never turn tail and run. A few months later, the Marines were killed, 241 were killed, and the Marines were taken out. And Reagan addressed this subject in his memoirs. And he says, I said I would never turn tail and run. He says, but I never realized the irrationality of Middle Eastern politics, and he changed his policy there. We need the courage of a Ronald Reagan. Brian from Fort Wayne asks this question via the Internet, a question about controlling government spending. Congressman Paul, can you tell me three federal programs you consider wasteful and would eliminate? I'd start with the departments. Department of Education, Department of Energy, Department of Homeland Security. We've started with, uh, we've just, the Republicans put in the Department of Homeland Security. It's a monstrous uh, type of, uh, of uh, bureaucracy. It was supposed to be streamlining our security and it's unmanageable. I mean, just think of the efficiency of FEMA uh, in, in its efforts to take care of the, uh, of the floods and the hurricanes. So yes, there's a lot of things that we can cut, but we can't cut anything until we change our philosophy about what government should do. If you think that we can continue to police the world and spend hundreds of billions of dollars overseas and spend hundreds of billions of dollars running a welfare state, an entitlement system that has accumulated $60 trillion worth of obligations and think that we can run the economy this way, we spend so much money now that we have to borrow nearly $3 billion a day from foreigners to take care of our consumption. And we can't afford that. We can't afford it in the government. We can't afford it as a nation. So tax reform should come, but spending cuts have to come by changing our attitude what government ought to be doing for us. You would eliminate the Department of Homeland Security in the midst of a war, sir? Well, I think we should not go to more bureaucracy. It didn't work. We were spending $40 billion on security prior to 9-11. And they had all the information they needed there to deal with the threat. And it was inefficiency. So what do we do? We add a gigantic bureaucracy, which they're still working on trying to put it together. And, and a tremendous amount of increase in funds. So I don't think that the Republican position ought to be more bureaucracy. I mean, why, do, why did we double the size of the Department of Education? Congressman Paul, I believe you are the only man on the stage who opposes the war in Iraq, who would bring the troops home uh, as quickly as almost immediately, sir. Are you out of step with your party? Is your party out of step with the rest of the world? If either of those is the case, why are you seeking its nomination? Well, I think the uh, party has lost its way because the uh, conservative wing of the Republican Party always advocated a non-interventionist foreign policy. Senator Robert Taft didn't want to be in NATO. 
uh, George Bush won the election in the year 2000 campaigning on a uh, humble foreign policy. No uh, nation building, no policing of the world. Republicans were elected to end the Korean War. The Republicans were elected to end the Vietnam War. There's a strong tradition of being anti-war uh, in the Republican Party. It is the constitutional position. It is the advice of the founders to follow a non-interventionist foreign policy. Stay out of entangling alliances. Be friends with countries. Negotiate and talk with them and trade with them. Just think of the tremendous improvement uh, of relationships with Vietnam. We lost 60,000 and then we came home in defeat now we go over there and invest in, in Vietnam. So there's a lot, of, a lot of merit to the advice of the founders and following the Constitution. And my argument is that we shouldn't go to war so carelessly. When we do, the wars don't end. Congressman, you, you don't think that changed with the 9-11 attack, sir? What changed? the non-interventionist policies. No, non-intervention was a major contributing factor. Have you ever read about the reasons they attacked us? They, they attack us because we've been over there. We've been bombing Iraq for 10 years. We've been in the Middle East. I think Reagan was right. We don't understand the irrationality of Middle Eastern politics. So right now we're building an embassy in Iraq that's bigger than the Vatican. We're building 14 permanent bases. What would we say here? if China was doing this in our country or in the Gulf of Mexico. We would be objecting. We need to look at what we do from the perspective of what would happen if somebody else did it to us. Are you suggesting we invited the 9-11 attack, sir? I'm, I'm suggesting that we listen to the people who attacked us and the reason they did it. And they are delighted that we're over there because Osama bin Laden has said, I am glad you're over on our sand because we can target you so much easier. They have already now, since that time, have killed 3,400 of our men, and I don't think it was necessary. Wendell, may I make a comment on that? That's really an extraordinary statement. That's an extraordinary statement of someone who lived through the attack of September 11 that we invited the attack because we were attacking Iraq. I don't think I've ever heard that before, and I've heard some pretty absurd explanations for September 11. And I would, I would ask the congressman to withdraw that comment and tell us that he didn't really mean that. Congressman? I believe very sincerely that the, that the CIA is correct when they teach and, and talk about blowback. When we went into uh, Iran in 1953 and installed the Shah, yes, there was blowback. Uh, the reaction to that was the taking of our hostages, and that persists. And if we ignore that, we ignore that at our own risk. That if we think that we can do what we want around the world and not incite hatred, then we then we have a problem. They don't come here to attack us because we're rich and we're free. They come and they, and they attack us because we're over there. I mean, what would we think if we were uh, if other foreign countries were doing that to us? Can I have 30 seconds, please? No, 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 no wait a second. Let's we all get 30 they, seconds. They, they, they are coming. Oh, oh, we all want 30 seconds to talk about this. We'll, we'll. Yeah. Congressman Paul, one last question for you on this. Um, the president believed after 9-11 that the tax cuts that he had put in place uh, were helpful in, in softening the economic downturn that occurred and, and allowing the United States economy to rise out of it. Would you propose, what economic policies would you propose under this scenario to avert or soften a recession? Well, the lower the taxes, the better. And I think cutting taxes would be beneficial, but we should find places where we could cut spending as well, because eventually a deficit can be uh, very, very harmful uh, to us. There'll be many more debates, but that is it for us tonight. Our thanks to the candidates and their staffs, and to our debate partner, the Republican Party of South Carolina, and also to the terrific people here at the University of South Carolina and the Coger Center for all of their help. Joining us now, Texas Congressman and presidential candidate Ron Paul. That was quite a moment between you and Rudolph Giuliani. I wonder if that had gone on a little longer, just what might have happened in that little mini debate within yeah. the debate that happened tonight. Maybe he'll debate me on foreign policy. I'd be delighted to debate him on foreign policy, where we each got to explain explain our position. The question that kept coming up for you was that you are not saying the same things the other Republican right. candidates are saying. You seem to be not in sync with what the party itself is saying. 
why run as a Republican? And if you don't get the nomination, would you run as an independent? Well, the majority of the American people don't like the war. And I want to be president of the country, not president of the Republican Party. you got to get the nomination first. Yeah, you? but the, the party itself has to have a position that's attractive to the entire country. We lost last year's election on the war issue. Most people believe right. that to but be But if you didn't get the nomination, would you run as an independent? No. No, you would not. no, I'm not planning on that. No, I don't intend to do that. You call yourself, you ran as Libertarian Party candidate in 1988, yet you call yourself pro-life. Where in the Constitution does it say, for example, that you can make laws restricting a woman's right to choose? If you want to be a constitutionalist, shouldn't the government stay totally out of the abortion Well, I think issue? the federal government should. What that's about the why, state government? What? What about state? It's up to the state government because the state governments we don't dictate to the states. Uh, and uh, protection of life is one of the important issues of government. If you can't protect life, how can you, can you protect liberty? So, but so, most libertarians, and I know you lean libertarian, would say the government, you know, women should have a right to choose. The government, even state government, should say out of it. You should not restrict a person's right to make that choice. That's that's what most libertarians would no, say. No, but all libertarians believe that you should never use a force to bring about changes and and. Act they reject an act of aggression. A fetus hey. is alive, it's human, it has legal rights. If you kill it, Ron, you have committed an act of aggression. I want to go back to this exchange you had with Mayor Giuliani here for just a second. Are you suggesting the United States of America caused the attack on 9-11? No, I, I think that's a cop-out. When, when people imply that, what you're saying is that if you don't endorse my foreign policy, you're un-American, you're unpatriotic. I, I never but said I, anything no, like that. I don't say it. You're no, suggesting... I don't say you. No, but I think that was the point in the debate, that if I didn't endorse this foreign policy, you turn it around or they he turned it around. I'm not saying that, but what, what specifically then are you saying? Are you suggesting that our policies are causing the hatred of people that would cause I them think, to want to kill I us? I think it contributes significantly to it, and this is exactly what our CIA tells us. And anybody who's done any research on this has found out. What have we well, done to cause answer. the attack? On, what did America do to cause the attack on 9-11? Okay, the Americans didn't do anything to cause it, but policies over many years caused and elicited hatred toward us so somebody was willing to commit suicide. For instance, the uh, occupation with our military troops on their holy land in Saudi Arabia, bombing a Muslim country for 10 years, putting on sanctions that killed hundreds of thousands you, uh, of people. You, so we, that I, caused I, well, an anger. Into, are you saying then that if the world ha does, has no moral obligation on the first Gulf War, when an innocent country is being pillaged and people are being raped and murdered and slaughtered, or in the case of Saddam, he's gassing his own people, are you suggesting we have no moral obligation? Well, to you, we, no, you stand by and let that immorality <laughs> happen? We have on numerous you, occasions. You, su you support no, no. that? We have on numerous occasions. If we Wait. feel like, if we feel strongly about it, why don't we declare? If a woman is being raped next door, we, we, we just do run. nothing there either? We're just out of time. But the fact is, the Reagan administration stood by while the Kurds were being gassed. It happened in 1988. We it didn't is, do anything about it. And what did we do with Pol Pot? Years? What did we do with Moscow? What did we do we, with we China? Make, we stood by and we, uh, they did it to their people. We got to run. You would stand by and do that. I would not. No, if, I think that's immoral. Well, would you have the courtesy to ask the Congress to declare war? Would you follow the we Constitution? We did declare war. The authorization. You that is not a declaration of war. There's no place. The, uh, in the Constitution that says specifically we got to run, guys. The Kurds, the Kurds were, were gassed, and we stood by for years until we gave them the gas. An excuse. We gave them we, uh, the gas. We're not responsible for what happened. More on the other, 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 they're going to keep debating. We're, debating. we're on the other side of the debate. Keep texting us your vote to 36988. We're coming up on close to 20,000 votes, and the percentages are still staying pretty consistent. In first place, Ron Paul, 29 percent.